Hey everybody, it is officially June 24th and we all know what that means. Yes, we are six months into 2019, headed to the best month ever that will be July because that's when my birthday is. So of course it would be my favorite and the best month in all of creation, right? July 21st, for those that were asking, I know you all had that in your mind. When is her birthday? July 21st, do not forget the best day in the world. So we are here and we are picking up where we left off for those that have not been a part of our journey. I just want to say thank you first off for tuning in, but my one word for 2019 had been focus and in looking at every single month. We have really tried to read a different book every month, but that's also a way of me being able to focus and reel in everything that's going on. Take a moment, sit down, pick up a book and get better. And so as I started looking at my journey and started looking at the journey to focus, I really wanted to think about what types of books would not just, I don't want to just sit around and like I have books like that where I can just sit and kind of breathe through and not really have anything that I learned from it, but I really want to learn. And in my new role, as in every role that I've been in, leadership is a big thing and building teams and having a great team culture and atmosphere and all that has been really, really important to me. So the book of last month by Simon Sinek has been Leaders Eat Last. And of course I got an autographed copy. He co he autographed it solely to Tamika. I just have to write my name in there. You just don't see it, but I'm gonna, I, I would, I'm lying. Okay. I picked up, it was an autographed copy and somebody else got it for me. And so it doesn't have my name on it, but he did sign it. So I think that's pretty cool. A lot of great things in this book and I think the biggest thing looking at the beginning one of the quotes that I picked up is the true price of leadership is the willingness to place the needs of others above your own. The true price of leadership, I'm going to say it one more time, the true price of leadership is the willingness to place the needs of others above your own and I think that's true in every single thing that we do and look at some of the leaders and the coaches that I've had in my life, Pat Summit, my coach, my, my coach, my boss now, Dr. Barbara, my previous boss, Kelly Koskoff, and all the other people that I've worked for and worked with. And I can honestly say, and even for me, like being a leader, when I think about my team and think about the people, my employees, I always want to make sure that they have everything that they need to be successful. So I think the biggest thing that you can do as a leader is be selfish enough where the only thing you're concerned about is yourself. You're not, you know, you don't want people to leave and find better opportunities. You don't want to see people kind of advance in their career. And I think that's the worst thing. So the first thing I always tell all of my employees, when you get hired, whether it's at Tease Me Cafe, whether it's with the foundation here with the fever, anywhere I go, it's all about advancement and it's all about the opportunity. I want you to be the best you that you can possibly be. And so for me, I want to give you all the tools and anything that I've learned because selfishly, I am a very unselfish person. So not being selfish is not, does not come hard. You know, I want to provide all the information that I can. And that's something that Simon talked about in his book, but along the same line, he talked about, you know, when you first get an employee, you first get somebody in, it's almost like you're adopting a child kind of weird but I guess in a sense it's not because the type of people that you want around and the type of people that you want in your culture hopefully fit what you want who you are the values the things that are important to you and so it is almost like adopting a child you want to bring somebody in and you want them to come in and be able to adjust to the culture and adjust to what you have basically provided and that's the same thing in being able to have new employees and being able to build your team I looked at the second part, better or, the better the organization perform, the more fuel there is to build an even bigger, more robust organization that feeds the heart and soul of those who work there. It's so true. Sometimes you have an organization, I look here at the fever and all the things that we've been able to create and, you know, I mean, we're continuing to build, celebrating our 20th year and, you know, got some great players, great product on the court, great people more than anything. But the more and more you see the, the success on the court, the, the more success we have as players, the more we want to do more. What else can we do? What can we do this? Can we do that? And I think really being able to focus on building things and being able to be to grow and be more robust but still streamlining and staying within your values and as a leader it's up to us to make sure that we do have that focus 
and that we do streamline everything because it is easy to be like, you know what, we're winning games, we're doing this, we're celebrating our 20th year and we want to continue to build, build, build and all these firecrackers, I just see the fireworks show and all that, but dial it down a little bit, let's focus, let's make sure that we're aligned with what we're trying to create and continue to build. You know, 20 years, I want to celebrate 25, 30, 50, 60, 100. That's what my goal is, to be able to be a part of the beginning, but it makes sure that it's still around for our my kids and my grandkids, for them to have the opportunity. So, a lot of great things in this book, but you know, one of the other things you talked about is when you bring somebody in and even as me when I first came in, having a transfer from having a me mentality, which we all have, you know, I want to get a job, I want this, I need that, I need all these different things. So you transfer your me attitude to a we attitude. And how do you transfer that? You transfer that by going into an organization and being able, I mean, he talked about like having a safe zone. So we all have a zone and it's kind of like the safe zone and outside the safe zone, you just see danger, danger, danger. And so we're self-consciously trying or subconsciously trying to make sure that we don't enter that danger zone. So being really strategic about coming in and yes, I got to give myself and we got to change from the me to the we, but being able to fit into where I'm going into, being able to fit into what's going on around me and make sure that I feel safe and that I feel super engaged in the environment that, I am, that I'm in. I can't say enough about all the things and I, I mean I wrote like a few things down and I can go on and on about it but you know the last thing that I'll leave you with is uh, I've given you two points thus far but the last one is generosity and other ways to build trust. Bad culture breed bad leaders, great culture breed great leaders. We all want to be a part of greatness, right? So when you think about being a leader and you think about being able to what what help create good leaders. It's about the culture that you create. And, you know, I've been very blessed being a part of this Indiana Fever culture and being a part of Pacer Sports and Entertainment that I have always felt safe. And I've always felt like this is an environment that I've been able to impact and going from the me aspect to the we aspect from the leadership standpoint on the court, now off the court. But being able to create that culture where people want to be a part of it and they want to come and they want to grow on the court, off the court, they just want to be in, in it. And that's what I appreciate the most, is just being able to be one of those great leaders that have been able to create a great culture. We all thrive because we are inspired to serve others. And that is the biggest thing at the end of the day, being able to be an inspiration to others. So I hope you have learned a lot. I hope you have read the book. If you have not, there is still plenty of time to go out and get the book. I mean, it's only June, we've read, this is the sixth book that we've read, so we got plenty more to come. And as we say goodbye to Simon Sinek's book, Leaders Eat Last, I have to introduce the next book, which I know you guys get so excited about. Can I get a drum roll? Boom, boom. Next book up, Pat Williams, Extreme Dream, Depend on Teams. Pat Williams, Extreme Dream, Depend on teams. Leadership, teamwork, building great teams. And I think like when I, anytime I see dreams, I just get excited. Because my always write hashtag dream will come true, dream do come true. And you can't have a dream without setting a goal. Set the goal, have a dream, work hard, an extreme dream. But you can't achieve anything without a team. Anybody that thinks that they can achieve greatness without a team, wrong. So, this is the next book, Leadership, Teamwork, Building Dream, Achieving Goals, all that good stuff. So before I sign off, it is June 24th, and we do know that I work for the Fever. So I want everybody that is listening to this and watching this, tomorrow we play the Minnesota Lynx. If you remember back to 2012, that is the team that we actually beat to win the championship. Yeah, that's when I need to start getting some confetti and all that stuff. I'll make sure that I have that for the next time. But that is the team that we beat. Obviously, it's a totally different team on both sides. But it will be a great game tomorrow night, June 25th, here, Bankers Life Fieldhouse at 7 o'clock p.m. And then, of course, I would be remiss. I, I did something. We're talking about dreams, and maybe this wasn't really a dream or a bucket list, but... I actually competed in American Ninja Warrior and 
The show will come out next Monday, July 1st. Don't miss it. July 1st. Don't know what time, but I will find out. Just Google American Ninja Warrior, but the quarterfinals will come out. you got to watch it. I competed in Baltimore. Time of my life, and I can't say anymore because I signed my life away. So, make sure you check it out. Make sure you check out July 1st. Put that on the calendar. Tomorrow night, Minnesota Lynx. I need you to be here. There's a whole bunch of games between now and July 24th. And my birthday, of course, is coming up in July 21st. Yay! So, you got a lot to put on your calendars, I know, and I know that you can do it because, hey, extreme dream depend on you. No, I'm just kidding. Extreme dream depend on team. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next month. Until then, bye. Go Fever!